Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. So many of us, I think, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, think when we pray, Thy kingdom come, God, we look around at the world and many of us think, the world's going the heck in a handbasket, falling apart at the seams. And we say, God, come down here and fix it. May your second coming come now. And so thy kingdom come means God intervene and fix all the things that we can't. And while there may be a layer of that in the Lord's Prayer, if we look and read more deeply into the Gospels and what Jesus is inviting you and I as disciples to pray and participate in, in thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, present tense, is an invitation to be involved in being kingdom builders to going out and living as Christ lived. So how do we do that? How does the Lord's Prayer become something that is not only something we pray, but something we live? Stay with us as we examine what it means to be a kingdom builder when we pray the Lord's Prayer. I invite you to join with me in the call to worship responsively. Thy kingdom come, 
here in our neighborhoods, in our streets, here and now, even in the shadows of darkness and fear. Help us as disciples to bring your kingdom's presence wherever we go and wherever our voices are heard. Through the hurts of estrangement, or divorce, despair, or grief, help me to be an agent of care, healing, and friendship. Through anger and tensions and escalated passions, help me to be a Christ-like bridge of peace. For all the people, Jesus, that you dared to connect with, and all the hurting hearts you helped to find. Help us to mirror the way you brought God's kingdom to this earth. Amen. Please be seated. And at this time, I'd like to invite any children or young at heart to please come on up front as we sing together, Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know. Good morning, boys and girls. How is everybody today? Coming on up? Come on up. Boys and girls, how many of you have heard of kingdoms? Uh, kingdoms? What do you need to have a kingdom? Yeah, what do you need? Go ahead. What do you need to have a kingdom, Miles? Money. money. You might need money. All right, what else do you need? Supplies. Supplies. What else? Lots of bricks. Lots of bricks, yes. What do you need? What else do you need? Uh, You might have a piece of bread, yes. Well, wait, who runs a kingdom? A king. All right, so you need a king or queen. All right, right? So you need a king or queen to have a kingdom? Do you need a king or king to ha queen to have a kingdom? No. Yeah, it needs somebody to run it, right? Is kingdom a place? No. It's not? Yeah. It is. Well, now, wait a minute, boys and girls. You're confusing me. Is it a place or is it not a place? It is a place. All right, well, here's the confusing thing a little bit. So every day that we pray the Lord's Prayer... Say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then we say, Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. God, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, what do you think it means for us to pray that God's kingdom is on earth like it is in heaven? Well, yeah, what do you think? Um, to, help, um, the people. to help people that God wants us to help. Okay. Anybody else have any ideas? Yeah. It's a little tricky, isn't it? Jesus tells us that, yeah, go ahead. Do you have a guess? No, okay. Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is present in you. Right here. In you. So where you go, boys and girls, and the way you care for your friends the way you show love to your classmates in school, and yes, your brothers and sisters, yeah, and your mom and dads, and people in church, and people who are strangers that maybe are in pads or on the streets who are hungry, or somebody who's, who you don't know, but you say, smile and say hello. And the way that we bring God's kingdom when we pray, we pray for God's kingdom, but the way we bring God's kingdom, Jesus tells us, is by how we love wherever we are. So can you be a kingdom builder for God when you're at school? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Can you be a kingdom builder for God when you're on the playground? And somebody's, what about when somebody's being a bully? Can you still be a kingdom builder there? Yes. Hold on one second. Yes, you can. Hold on, I'll get to you one second. Mom. Can you be a kingdom builder when your brother or sister wants to share toys? Uh, yes. Absolutely. You can't. Yeah, I heard a no. Yes, you can. You can. <laughs> You really, you really can. I know sometimes you're not sure. I know. Sometimes I wasn't sure either. But you can be. So wherever you go, I want you to think about when you pray the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that the kingdom of God starts every day that prayer can begin with you thinking about how you can show God's love wherever you go to be a kingdom builder. You're part of the kingdom of God. Each one of you, all of us in this room. Okay? Let us pray together, all right? Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, boys and girls, did you guys remember to bring some little coins to help feed the boys and girls who are hungry at Feed My Starving Children? Did anybody remember to do that this day? If you did, on your way out, put it in the church, okay? You can ring the bell. All right? We'll see you in Sunday. Go ahead and go to your Sunday school class, and we'll see you next time. Yes, sir. What was it? Please join me in the second verse of Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me still today, walking with me on my way, wanting as a friend to give light and love to all who live. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. We have two scripture readings today. The first is Matthew 6, verses 5 through 13. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. The second scripture is Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. So sends the reading. out to me. Your grace has made a way to you. Made a way to you. Your word lives inside of me. Your truth is life to all who hear. Life to all who hear. We live for you. Live your truth. May your Serve your heart, serve your heart. Let salvation flow as your people pray. Lord, we long for more. is overcome. No power can stand against your name, the power of your name. In faith we will rise to be your hands and feet to all the earth, life to all the earth. We live for
for you. Live your truth. May your kingdom come and your will be done as we serve your heart. Serve your heart. Let salvation flow as your people pray. Lord, we long for more. Will you please join with me in a word of prayer? God, we pray that thy kingdom would come, be made visible. The times when we look around at the world and sometimes are overwhelmed by the capacity of human evil, the violence in our own streets and city, for all the places that we look that seem broken and long for life, for light and love to triumph. In some places where it seems so far from the reality of prejudice and hatred, finger pointing and animosity between groups of people, the labels we seem unable to escape. What might it look like if we who prayed the prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, what might it look like if we lived into the building of that kingdom? We pray, Holy Spirit, to bless us in this work. For it will take us to places we don't expect to go, cause us to meet neighbors we may be uncomfortable meeting, and to see within ourselves things that we might not want exposed to the light. Help us to be kingdom builders, that your kingdom may be made visible here, in this time, in this place, in this community. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. I was uh, driving on I-94 when I was serving the church in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I remember seeing the billboard 
The apocalypse is at hand, May 21st, 2011, 6 p.m. And I thought, well, that's pretty specific. <laughs> Wrote it down, and, but, but uh, Reverend Harold Camping had made the prediction, had taken out ads. Maybe you saw him here in Chicago, but they were all over the place. Uh, camping with his Bible in hand saying, we are at the end times. And when May 21st, I was thankful to have one more Cinco de Mayo and May the 4th be with you. But anyway, <laughs> on May 21st, when it rolled by and tens of thousands of faithful followers of Reverend Camping waited, and I don't know what you do to prepare if they bought bottled water. I'm not sure how that would help you preparing for the apocalypse. But anyway, they did something just to feel like they could. And it passed. And he said, well, it was a spiritual end times. And the, net, the real end time, the real rapture will be October 21st. I miscalculated by six months. And of course, October 21st came around and, and Reverend Camping was discredited as a false prophet and many people unfollowed him. And in many ways, he left uh, his public ministry in disgrace. But he's not alone. Whether you see it in the Star or the Inquirer, people talking about when will the kingdom of God arrive? I mean, it, there, are, there was, a, uh, in the 1800s, a chicken in Leeds, England that supposedly laid eggs that had somehow the coming of Christ in the egg. You know, people seeing things in the clouds. And whether it's the Heaven's Gate people waiting a starship of aliens to come down from heaven to rescue them from the world, or it's Jim Jones literally having people drink the cyanide lace Kool-Aid to avoid the nuclear winter that was imminent because of capitalism. People somehow are drawn to this end time apocalyptic language and wanting to know when is it going to happen? When is Christ going to come again? And somehow, in many ways, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, it gets co-opted into this idea that it's only built around Jesus coming again. So this idea, kind of like from the emotion that you read when you read Psalm 13, how long, O Lord? How long will my enemies gloat over me? How long will you hide your face from me? How long, God, when I look around the hurting places of the world, some of the human suffering I see, until, God, you come and fix this mess? And I suppose the closest moment in my own life when I felt that kind of emotion was in 2012 when I believe his, his name is Adam Lanza, I may be wrong on that, but he, he went into Sandy Hook Elementary School, a man who had mental disability. And you know the rest, shot 25 six-year-olds and their teachers. I thought, God, how does anyone in your creation do such terrible things? I cannot comprehend why. Why would such a violent thing happen to the innocent? And it's at moments like those when we pray that God would come in on chariots of fire, or thunderbolts, I'm not sure, blazing, to save humanity from itself, to reset the button. But when Jesus, and recall from last week, when Jesus is asked by the disciples, Lord, teach us how to pray, when Jesus prays, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, is that what he's talking about? Or is it something else? We get a first indicator when Jesus is asked that very question by the Pharisees in Luke's gospel, and they say, when, Messiah, when, Jesus, when is the kingdom of God coming? Tell us. Tell us in plain Hebrew. Tell us in plain Aramaic. When is it coming? And he tells them, some people are going to tell you it's coming here or there. Maybe he knew about the Inquirer or the Star at the time. I'm not sure. But he said, people will tell you the end is coming, this date, this time. Don't believe them. And then he says something very interesting. It depends how the Greek is translated into English and to which English Bible as it's translated. He says, the kingdom of God is within you. Or that phrase can also mean the kingdom of God is within your midst. I've always thought that's an amazing verse. Does that mean that Jesus is saying the kingdom of God is here because Jesus is standing there amongst them? So the kingdom of God is here because of who Jesus is? 
Or is Jesus saying the kingdom of God is in you already? It exists here. In every person that God has made, the kingdom of God has started right here and right now in you. It's not finished yet because there's yet work to do. And I'm going to argue for the latter interpretation. The Greek is not clear, so it could go either way. But here's why I think Jesus means it's in you. It starts in you. Because over 55 times in just the Gospel of Matthew alone, Jesus talks about the kingdom of God. And what does Jesus say the kingdom of God is like? Well, he talks about it all the time. He says, you want to see what the kingdom of God is like? The kingdom of God is like a giant net, a dragnet, that gets cast out into the sea. And it's not fishing for one particular kind of fish. No, it pulls in everything. Every creature, crabs and tuna and starfish, everything that's out there, it pulls in. All kinds of fish. In other words, the kingdom of God is for every person, everyone, no exceptions. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. You've heard this one. Tiny little insignificant seed, and we say, oh, it's, we're always enamored by the mustard seed parable because a small seed grows into some beautiful big tree that all the birds of the air make their nests in. Well, truth be told, the mustard seed by many in ancient Israel is regarded as a weed because it grew everywhere. It's the kudzu of uh, the Middle East, really. It's, I mean, you, you plant it somewhere and whew, it's all over the place. You can't, you know, you're in there hacking away like a machete trying to get through the thing. It grows everywhere. It's contagious. You plant it one place expecting it to stay there and it doesn't. It goes from this one to that one to there. You can't contain it. Because the joy within the kingdom flows from one person to the next. Contagious. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who invites all his closest friends and relatives to a wedding. We do this, right? But the closest friends and relatives say, ah, I've got something to do. i got to clean out the toilet with a toothbrush next week. I can't make it. You know, I'm busy. And... The king says, all right, you made your excuses. You want to come? Go out to the streets and get me the homeless. Get me the marginalized. Get me the guys living in the cardboard box and invite them into the banquet. Invite them in to taste and see what is good and beautiful. They will be my guests. That's what the kingdom of God is like. Jesus again and again talks about the kingdom of God in the everyday and ordinary. And he says, it's all around you. A woman needing bread, two guys fishing in a boat, a child who comes up to you, and you can see the kingdom of God through their eyes. You want to know what the kingdom of God is like? It's all around, waiting to be set free and broken loose through the action of disciples. Again and again, Jesus invites his disciples to partake and engage in being kingdom builders. So when we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, here and now, like it is in heaven, Jesus is inviting us to be part of the prayer we pray for, to be active agents in building the kingdom of God. Mahatma Gami used to say something very similar when he said, be part of the prayer that you pray for. Be an active agent in the world to answer the prayers you are praying for as much as it depends upon you and the faith that you have to make connections with one another. So what might the kingdom of heaven look like today if Jesus was telling parables? It might be that wherever your feet take you, that in your own neighborhood, it's a building of relationship. You see, I think, unfortunately, the honest truth is, as churches, we get this all backwards. Our church included at times. You say, well, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Churches tend to say, kind of a field of dreams model. If we build it here, people will come. Right? If we have a great worship service, we have good music, we have a uh, coffee hour and good refreshments, and we have great spread. And if you see the way the kids kind of vulture down to the coffee hour, you see it's good food usually. So if you haven't been down there, please do go check it out. But if, if we have it here, then people, of course, will flock in. And we know they'll, they'll come in from the community far and wide to see what we've got going on here. And there's nothing wrong with inviting your friend to church and encouraging your coworker to come to church with you. Those are good things. 
But it's not the model Jesus puts out for us. He didn't say, you want to build the kingdom of God now? Let's have an invites your neighborhood to synagogue day. It's nowhere in the Gospels. Jesus said, do you want to be kingdom of God builders? Go. Go out. I send you. I commission you to go to the ends of the earth. Wherever you go, bring the good news of a God who cares about us down from the hair on our head down to the toes of our feet. Go and share this with your neighbors. Go and take it to your friends. The kingdom of God is not, according to Jesus, a place, a geographical dominion, you know, like the kingdom of Persia, the kingdom of Alexander the Great. No. The kingdom of God is a relationship between God and God's people that carries from one light, one person willing to be salt and light, and going out and being compassion of Christ, being the, the caring and serving of Christ, being the joy of Christ to someone else. So what might that look like in your and my life? It might mean on the block of your neighborhood, you know a single mom who's working two jobs to make ends meet, has three children at home, and you and your partner say, listen, hey, Susan, why don't you let the kids come over to our house? We'll have a pizza and game night with the kids. You take one night to kind of recharge, recharge your batteries. We know how hard you're working all the time. Let us do this for you and, you know, have a, have a free night to go and take care of whatever you need to take care of. And uh, you can do that as much as you would like. It might be a child who comes to a woman recently widowed from the next door and says, has a man who lived here, is he gone, has he died? And she tells him, yes, he has. And the little boy says, I miss him. I care about you. Are you okay? And together, God's kingdom is present. And a grieving widow and a child who also is grieving, and together they remind each other of the love they have for each other. It might be somebody at work who's going through some challenges. And you just say the simple thing, are you okay? No, really. Don't tell me, yeah, everything's fine. I can see it in your face. Are you okay? Would you like to go out and catch a coffee, grab a meal after work? I'm here for you. The kingdom of God shows up where you and I engage in relationship with the people around us, in being those who care deeply about the world in the kind of compassion that Jesus had. Look at how Jesus builds kingdom. Most of his time, if you were to do a pie graph of it or chart, most of his time's not in the synagogue or in the temple even. It's out breaking bread with tax collectors, somehow going to streets and engaging prostitutes and the lepers and those who are on the margins. And I think now more than ever, church, when we have a, a high tension of, of name-calling and prejudice and, and labeling of one another, now more than ever, for the church to come together and say to whoever it is that we're interacting with, whether at the mall or in a restaurant or on social media, and to remember this person, if they have very different ideological ideas or political ideas or cultural ideas than you or I, and to say, this is a person that God deeply cares about. This is a person that matters to God. How can I build a bridge of compassion and love? How can I be Christ-like to them? Jesus doesn't tell the disciples, pray, God, send your kingdom in a thousand years and just we'll take care of it from here on out. Jesus says, pray that God's kingdom come. God's will be done in you and I. That heaven and earth would mirror each other. But most particularly, that earth would reflect the values of God's kingdom and God's children. 
So wherever we go, whoever you are on this life's journey, you are a representative of the kingdom of God. You can be good press for the kingdom of God, or you can be bad press for the kingdom of God. But it is, in many ways, up to us to how we are stewards of that message of good news. How do we reflect it in our day-to-day lives? One pastor who I was reading recently, Reverend Tim Harlow, said, if you are living in the abundant life of Jesus in your day-to-day life, you are the gospel with clothes on wherever you go. In my time, I've heard all kinds of sermons. I've preached a few as well. But I will tell you the best sermons I've ever heard were not given in any church. They were ones that were lived out by people who took the time in their lives to stop me with whatever I was doing and to let me know that I mattered to them. And those moments, those rare moments when somebody just took their time out and said, what is it? Where is it that you are at? How can I be of help to you? That I remember, and that you probably remember, somebody in your life who has touched you deeply in love and selfless kindness action. And there the kingdom of God is found. So I ask you, when we pray, Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In what ways can you and I be real and active kingdom builders here and now, starting today? It's our Super Bowl. And we're all players. And you don't have to be athletic to do it. Amen. There are a lot of ways we offer ourselves. This past week, uh, a local mosque in Glen Ellen, members of Etchheim Synagogue, wake of the synagogue bombings, and threats, members of the mosque, Episcopalian and Catholic, and our church came together. And I remember an evangelical friend of mine saying to me, why would you do that? Why would you go to a mosque? His implication being that any Muslim was an enemy of Christianity. I said, Christ calls me to be a disciple to all. Not some. Not some of my neighbors. But to all. And what if it had happened to your church? Would you not want also people to stand with you and to remind you there's a God who loves you, calls you by name? We offer ourselves in different ways, but whatever those specific ways may be for you, each of us has a calling. And so as we receive the plates this day, I'd ask you not only to consider how you support the church financially, but how do you support the life and love of Christ beyond these walls. Where are you called to be a kingdom builder this week as we offer ourselves and our gifts to the kingdom of God? I invite the ushers to please come forward for our morning offering.
to the one God, to the one God. You are, you are the matchless King who tore down the gates of the enemy. Make way, make way for Christ and sing. Let your kingdom come, let your kingdom come. Arise, for the battle's won. Our hearts bow. your hands and sing to the one God, to the one God. You are, you are the matchless King who tore down the gates of the Let your kingdom come, let your light shine in, well, 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 let your light shine in. Who tore down the gates of the enemy? Make way, make way for Christ and sing. Let your kingdom come. You are, you are the matchless king who tore down the gates of the enemy. kingdom God, in Jesus' day, everyone knew that Rome was the power and held all the cards. And yet a band of ill-equipped and untrained men and women ignited something that grew 
to what Christianity is today. Because each of them, despite their limitations and their flaws, decided to go all in to be kingdom builders in their own backyards and in their communities and in their world. Help us to do the same and empower us to be your church. Thy kingdom come. Let it begin with me. Amen. Our closing song is number 552, We Are All One in Mission. If you're visiting with us this day, uh, one of our closing traditions at First Congregational, as we say, no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, at the beginning of every worship service, is to join hands with our neighbors to show that we are in solidarity and in journey together as a body of Christ, as a faith family, that no one walks alone. So I invite you to join us as we sing our closing benediction. One of the greatest disciples I've ever met was 10 years old. I was working as a chaplain at Duke Hospital, and this little girl who was dying with cancer treatments worked with her family to bring in some of the team, the basketball team, and some other celebrities from the area to do a play day with the kids in the hospital. And the joy of those kids who had been going through those treatments and doctors appointments and their families through all that trauma for that afternoon got to be children who remembered what it is to laugh and play and be young what a gift she gave not having great sums of money or great prestige 
but just what she had to give as who she was. You don't have to have great resources to be a great disciple. May you be a kingdom builder with what God has given you in the love of Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Before you go enjoy sports ball, please stick around with us for our new postlude hire. No one sports ball? Life's doing me wrong, hey! Gotta shake the dust off my feet and keep marching on. When trouble weighs me down, brings me to my knees. Lord, my needs are many, but that's a pretty, yeah, a pretty good place to be. Don't blame it on the preacher, cause the preacher done told The devil's got a target on my heart and soul But let me tell your brother what the devil don't know The lower I go, the more I'm gonna lift you higher Higher, higher I'm gonna lift you higher Higher, higher I may never get money, hey! I may never have fame, hey! But if I'm ever standing at the top, God, like your way. Cause standing at the top was never ever my goal. If you put me on the mountain, hell the whole world. Singing hallelujah till I hit the dirt. Whoa, I'm gonna lift you higher. Have a great week. Enjoy the Lady Gaga concert tonight.